This video will be looking at the second type of behavioural therapy for phobias, flooding. First, we're going to look at the theory behind what flooding actually is. Flooding is where you put someone in a scenario where they are inescapably exposed to their phobia. So there's no gradual build up like systematic desensitization. They are put in a scenario where they cannot escape. They might be taught relaxation techniques beforehand. So you'll teach them the deep breathing, the muscle relaxation techniques. But if we use the example of someone with arachnophobia, they'll be put in a scenario where a large spider will crawl all over them for an extended period of time. There's no other build up to that scenario. That is the whole session. They'll be put a spider on them and see how they respond. And they need to really try and get over their phobia in this way. And sometimes if the person's able to cope with that. It might only take one, two or three hour session for them to be cured of their phobia. But it's all about exposing them with no gradual build up. So there is a theory behind flooding and it's all about not giving someone the option of any avoidance behavior. And that if you do that and if you put the phobic stimulus with them, then they soon start to realize that it's not actually that dangerous, that the phobic stimulus is actually a harmless thing and can't cause them any danger whatsoever. And it's also linked to a physical response that with this physical response of fear can only last for so long. And as that decreases and as we become a bit exhausted from being scared, our anxiety response also starts to decrease as well. Of course, there are ethical issues. You can't do this type of treatment without having informed consent from the patient first. They've got to be able to read the consent form. They've got to know exactly what they're getting involved with before they take part. Without that, you're raising a whole load of ethical issues that you don't want to get involved with. And also, it is very, very difficult with young children. One, because young children probably don't understand what some of the terms mean. And two, it is going to cause an awful lot of trauma. Even if they know what they're signing up for or their parents do, it's going to cause an awful lot of distress to that child, which can also raise an ethical concern. If we recap then about the key points you want to be getting into an answer, you can teach them the relaxation te techniques beforehand. It's all about immediate exposure. There is no gradual build up. They are inescapably exposed to their phobic stimulus. And also, there's no avoidance behavior that is completely removed. And hopefully that allows the person to realize that their phobic stimulus is actually pretty harmless. Right, we're going to move on to the strengths and limitations of flooding as a treatment for phobias. One of the main things is it's obviously more cost effective than systematic desensitization. It might only involve one session with a therapist. And if people can actually get through the experience, then they could be cured in a matter of hours. So it's going to cost them an awful lot less money and it's going to be less time consuming. However, it is very traumatic. It can be unethical, potentially, especially when it involves children. And many people don't see it all the way through. They can't deal with the high levels of stress that it causes. If you imagine someone who's exceptionally afraid of spiders and then a spider is put right on their body, or right on their face in order for them to try and get over it. Most people are just going to walk out of the room. They can't handle the stress that it causes. And a lot of people, that's going to be a big waste of money and time because you've signed up for a therapist, it could cost you a couple of hundred pounds, and then you don't even see it through because you can't handle the high levels of stress that it's causing. Shipley did a study in 1980 and he found that 0.2% of patients had panic attacks when they were exposed to flooding. Okay, when they were conducted in this flooding treatment, that 0.2% of people had panic attacks. However, it's still considered a very safe form of treatment in comparison to other treatments. So although 0.2% have had panic attacks, it's still considered a very safe form of treatment. Some people have claimed that flooding is probably less effective for certain phobias. If we look at people who have severe complex social phobias where they feel they're always being judged or everything they say is being judged by every single person in the room and that they're always going to judge them poorly or 
judge them differently on whatever they say, then these clearly have certain cognitive aspects. It's clearly something irrational going on with that person's thinking. It must be due to unpleasant thoughts or due to the way they're processing information. So perhaps for certain phobias, like complex social phobias, that have cognitive causes, they might need cognitive treatments. So it's the potential that maybe it doesn't work for every single phobia. Maybe it only works for those that have a personal experience attached to them, like a fear of spiders or being bitten by a dog, something like that. It has been suggested that flooding only results in symptom substitution. So it removes the symptoms. Someone's phobia might be completely cured after a couple of hours, but the cause is still there. We haven't really dealt with the issues behind the phobia. And it's suggested that it might resurface in maybe a later time as a different phobia. So you go in with a phobia of spiders, you have your flooding, crawls all over you, you're cured in a couple of hours, but two weeks down the line, you've now got a phobia of snakes. And it's all because we haven't really dealt with the cause of the issue. What was causing that phobia of snakes? We haven't dealt with that. All we've done is taught someone that a snake is a little bit harmless. So we need to make sure we treat the actual cause. And this doesn't really do that. However, there is very limited evidence for that. So although it's a weakness, there isn't much evidence to actually back it up. Let's have a look. If you're going to be talking about this in an answer and they ask you to evaluate flooding as a treatment, the things you should be trying to talk about are it is far more cost effective than systematic desensitization. However, it is exceptionally traumatic and does raise ethical issues. Certain phobias it might not be as effective for. OK, if we look at evolutionary phobias, cognitive phobias, then it's probably not going to treat those as well. And also this idea of symptom substitution. Will it just escalate or will it just evolve into a different phobia a little bit later on because we haven't dealt with the actual cause of the phobia? So these are the evaluation points, the strengths and the limitations that exist for flooding.